Happy Wednesday! Welcome to episode 13 of Uncovering the Corners of the World podcast. I'm your host, Karina Kasmala. Each week using research, and in some cases using personal experiences where I actually travel to these locations, I'll be explaining some of the hidden gems in the U.S. and around the world. Last week we visited Indiana, where we walked through an 1860s town where we saw the grist mill and the apothecary building at Spring Mill State Park. And then we crawled through a tunnel and took selfies with mushrooms at Clifty Falls State Park. This week, we are driving towards Missouri, the state that borders Illinois and is known for its Gateway Arch that is also called the Gateway to the West. Missouri is also the state that was named after the Missouri Indians, which was supposed to mean the town of the large canoes. Another fun fact about Missouri is that their state folk dance is square dance, and their state musical instrument is the fiddle. Our first attraction is something that we wouldn't expect to see within the trees of a state park. A European castle, to be exact. The ruins of a yellowish sandstone brick European style castle sits on top of a 250 foot high cliff in Haha ha Tonka State Park at 1491 Missouri D, Camptonton, Missouri. What was supposed to be 60 rooms with a ballroom being one of them and a center atrium that was three and a half stories high is just a roofless castle today. Robert M. Schneider was a rich Kansas City businessman who worked in the grocery business, real estate, banking, and utilities. He bought the land in 1903 where the Haha ha Tonka State Park is today. His plan was to build a European-style castle on it, along with a water tower, greenhouses, and stables too. However, he died a year later after the castle was just being constructed. The project was continued on by his sons and was finished in 1922. It was also during the time that the Bagnell Dam, the dam that carried water to make Lake of the Ozarks, divided the land. According to the Atlas Obscura website, one of Schneider's sons lived in the castle until there were problems surrounding the land rights that the castle was on. The castle was then used as a hotel in the 1940s, around the same time that in 1942, a fire from the chimney burned down the roof of the castle, along with the entire water tower and the carriage house, as mentioned by the Missouri State Parks website. Ha Ha Tonka State Park also includes other attractions, such as a natural-made coliseum that was formed by a cavern that collapsed, creating a sinkhole that is 500 feet long, 300 feet wide. There is also the natural bridge that is 70 feet wide, 60 feet long, and 100 feet up in the air. The further you walk into the park, you can spot the Ha Ha Tonka Spring, also known as Missouri's 12th largest spring, where more than 48 gallons of water flow into the Lake of the Ozarks, as mentioned by the Missouri State Park website. While you can't fish at Ha Ha Tonka Spring, you can fish at the Lake of the Ozarks in the park, as well as kayak and boat. As for the creatures that crawl through the park, there are skinks, which is a type of lizard, like the broad-headed skink, five-lined skink, northern fence lizard, or six-lined race runner. Closer by the prairies lives the prairie scorpion, and Missouri Tarantula, while up in the trees are the red-headed woodpecker, summer tanager, blue-gray gnat catcher, black and white warbler, and eastern wood peewee. The flip phone, the blackberry, the iPhone, or the android might be the phones that could have been in your home at one point or another. In St. Louis County at 12 Hancock Avenue, St. Louis, Missouri, there is more than the last flip phone invented lying around. 
step into what at one point could have been ringing hallways of telephones, the Jefferson Barracks Telephone Museum, known to be in a restored 1896 building. The museum is listed on the National Register of Historic Places and has over 100 years of artifacts, ranging from the 1880s through the 2000s, that you can experience for yourself. Some of the telephone treasures that you can find within the museum include the automatic electric dial candlestick telephone, first made in 1905, invented by Almond Stroger, where the 11-digit dial eliminated the need to call to the operator. The telephone switch was made from electromagnets and hat pins, as mentioned by the Jefferson Barracks Telephone Museum website. No longer was the operator at the switchboard at the local telephone exchange needed. Another telephone is the Chicago Tandem Glass Front Telephone, made by the Chicago Telephone Supply Company in Indiana. The tall telephone structure had bells in the top and wiring connecting to the batteries on the bottom. It was known for the telephone signal to travel further than any other telephone and outlast them as well. There is also the Western Electric Model 302, a standard black colored phone with a dial knob and was the first to have a ringer and network wiring in the same desktop phone, as mentioned by the museum website. In 1939, people had to pay more to get the phone in a different color. Besides phones, there's also the 1904 World's Fair telephone chart that listed the residential subscribers and their numbers on a chart that was 18 yards or 54 feet long. The chart also listed the price for a direct line, which was $3 per month, equal to $85.69 today in today's dollars and duplex a two-party line, which was $2 per month, equal to $57.12 in today's dollars. The museum is open from Wednesday through Sunday from 9 a.m. to 2 Our last attraction takes us to Chesterfield Central Park at 16365 Lindia Hill Drive, Chesterfield, Missouri to see the aluminum statue known as the Great Awakening II, the replica from the original in Maryland. A giant, angry, bearded man pushes through the ground with one hand clawing at the sky, while the other is barely visible popping up from the ground. One of his knees is bent, while his other leg is hidden except for his toes pointed toward the sky. This 70 foot in length and 17 feet at the tallest point structure was made by J. Seward Johnson Jr. in 1980 in Washington, D.C., but installed in 2009 in the Chesterfield Park in Missouri. Thank you for listening to this week's episode. Make sure you subscribe to this podcast wherever you get your podcasts, and tune in next week as we explore more hidden attractions in the U.S.